As much as DreamWorks' very nature when it comes to making movies is throwing stuff at a wall and seeing what sticks, I'd say they've been on a roll recently. Okay, ignore that. And what better way to keep that momentum going than with a brand new installment in one of their most beloved and iconic franchises? I hope Kung Fu Panda doesn't require an introduction, I can never be sure of the age range for people who watch my videos these days, but Kung Fu Panda, to this day, is still one of DreamWorks' most iconic and beloved franchises for its incredible art direction and animation, creative and downright breathtaking fight scenes, and it manages to be funny while having an emotional maturity to it that elevates the otherwise familiar storylines. Even if the internet has largely ruined Kung Fu Panda 2 for me. <laughs> Oh, this long stick is gay. What? What? And you'll usually get many people debating on the best animated trilogy of all time, or even the best film trilogy of all time, and Kung Fu Panda will frequently be brought up in those discussions. It's just that good. The franchise ended back in 2016 with Kung Fu Panda 3, neatly wrapping up the trilogy's character arcs and story. While people tend to agree that 3 wasn't as good as the previous two, it's still a solid and satisfying conclusion all things considered, and to this day I am still shocked at how proficient DreamWorks are at making sequels this good. For the vast majority of studios, a sequel is often the mark of an easy cash grab, as much as they want to tell you that it isn't. Incredibles 2 was mid and I am still unhappy about it. But one thing many have caught on to is that DreamWorks are pretty outlandishly good at making sequels, to the point where many agree that pretty much every sequel they've ever made has been better than the original or at least expanded on it in some meaningful ways. How to Train Your Dragon is one of my favourite trilogies of all time and the second movie is an honest contender for my favourite movie ever. Even sequels to films of theirs that aren't exactly great have turned out to be some of the studio's best work. Of course, sometimes that isn't the case. <laughs> But it can't be denied that DreamWorks are weirdly consistent when it comes to making incredible sequels compared to their contemporaries. DreamWorks sequels, more often than not, do more than enough to justify their existence beyond the need for more money. Which is why when it comes to Kung Fu Panda 4, a lot of people are living with the comfortable expectation that it'll at least be a good movie. And I have to admit, I do think it'll be a solid film. But after finally watching the finished trailer, and yes, I said finished trailer, while I find the new story interesting and the animation is always as fantastic, I've finally asked myself a question I don't think I've considered for a DreamWorks sequel before. Is Kung Fu Panda 4 really necessary? For the longest time, Kung Fu Panda 4 was just one of those movies that everyone knew was in production but still didn't actually believe was a thing. It was even harder to believe when earlier this year someone just leaked an unfinished version of the trailer into my Discord server, causing hundreds of people to join, grab it, and proceed to spread it across social media. DreamWorks lawyers, this was not my fault. I didn't ask for this. This happened to me. Even when I was looking at all the unfinished animation and storyboards set to placeholder music by Drake for some reason. I still didn't really believe the film existed, not because I was completely against the idea, just just completely, but because given what was being offered by the film's plot in this trailer, what they wanted to do with Poe's character and the return of many of the franchise's previous villains in service of the new bad guy, I personally wasn't convinced that there was any reason for Kung Fu Panda to not remain a trilogy, especially given it's been seven years since the previous installment and the sense of finality that the third movie brought to the franchise. I mean, considering the planned six movies we were originally supposed to get seemed to just disappear after free release, it seems strange for the franchise to get picked up again for a new installment after so long. And that's that's what I want to talk about today. Is Kung Fu Panda 4, for as solid of a film that it may turn out to be, really going to be necessary? Just how many Kung Fu Panda films are we going to get if this turns out to not be the last one? And in an era obsessed with sequels and reboots of established IPs, is it okay to ask for just a little bit of closure every now and then? Let's discuss the actual trailer first. I don't like this trailer. In fact, I think this is a bad trailer. Do not trace my location. Now, this isn't anything new for Kung Fu Panda. In fact, the trailers for the first two films specifically are god awful. Choosing to focus on the comedy of the film and never taking anything about it seriously despite the action and serious moments being what makes the franchise so beloved. So there's a lot here that I'm willing to chalk up to bad marketing. But given we live in a futuristic and progressive era where trailers for animated movies are finally tolerable, it doesn't really spark much confidence when the trailer takes the epic music stops, characters says a funny, then smash cut to a random scene of someone groaning like that f***ing Mario movie green text. Especially when all of the jokes are severely unfunny and the trailer literally ends with a fart joke. I know DreamWorks are capable of making trailers that properly sell their movies. How to Train Your Dragon 3 had a fantastic trailer, so don't see what the issue is here. Anyway, what else? Oh yeah, Aquafina is in this movie. Where, where, chicka, where? I'm getting sick of this woman. She isn't everything. Although she seems to be giving a tolerable performance for once, so we'll see how that plays out. Okay, but on a serious note, what really struck me about this trailer was, of course, the story. Where do you go after Kung Fu Panda 3 seemingly concluded the series and Poe's journey? Well, 
I think they were struggling to come up with ideas themselves. In an interview with Jeffrey Katzenberg in 2010, they stated they had actually planned out five more Kung Fu Panda movies after the first one. How far those plans went when it comes to fleshing out their narratives and characters is anyone's guess. But given the franchise reached a natural conclusion with the third entry and then disappeared, my guess is not very far. To Kung Fu Panda's credit, there's a lot of places you can take it and expand upon its world and characters, but you can say that for a lot of properties that still found a natural conclusion and knew when to stop. I should know that, I'm a Gravity Falls fan. That was really bad timing on my part, I apologize. So to go over the basic plot we've been given so far. Poe is retiring from being the Dragon Warrior to become the spiritual master of the Valley of Peace and has to find a successor. All the while facing off against the new villain, the Chameleon, who has taken the Kung Fu and appearances from the previous film's villains. This sounds solid on its own, but the devil is in the details. The vibes this movie is giving me so far is that it's going through the motions and recycling a lot of ideas from previous films. It feels weirdly by the books and not very creative. The Chameleon, despite being cool on paper, is incredibly similar to Kai, the main antagonist of the third movie. Kai stole the chi of kung fu masters and created copies of them. The chameleon is straight up stealing the kung fu of previous villains and taking their appearances. That's the only real difference between the two. They're incredibly similar. Something to add is that Kai was made as the first supernatural antagonist of the series because Tai Long had already taken the mantle as the brawler villain and Shen was the smarter one. Kai being a supernatural villain was done to make him stand out. But with the chameleon they're trying to go for something that's both smart and supernatural. And this wouldn't strike me as weird if they hadn't been deliberately made making sure all of their villains stood out before with no overlap. It really kind of sells how Kung Fu Panda 3 was a proper conclusion and that 4 is struggling to come up with new ideas, especially when the villain they came up with is strikingly similar to the previous one. Also not a fan of how they're clearly setting this film up like it's a brand new finale after the one we already got by just pumping it full of fan service. Mike Mitchell, the director of 4, has said that Kung Fu Panda 4 brings back all of the characters. All of them. This not only includes the previous villains, but also every character we can remember, apparently. Never mind how this is going to potentially bloat the movie and lead to a lot of characters not being well utilized, you'd usually reserve a move like this for a final installment, right? Is this really going to be a final installment, or are those other two movies going to happen after this? Kung Fu Panda 3 managed to be a satisfying conclusion without going all in on fan service. Also, if you're bringing back every character, you are going to make sure they're important to the plot, right? So far, it seems like every important character besides Shifu has been sidelined and the film feels incredibly disconnected from the previous installments. So now we have two problems. There's the problem of this film potentially blowing its load and filling the film with a ton of cameo appearances and fan service for the sake of it, and then there's the problem of the film's main plot being completely disconnected to the point where no one shows up in a role that's actually meaningful. Example, The Furious Five? More like The Furious Died, where the f*** are these guys? Yeah, they're confirmed to be in the film, but they're clearly not playing a major part if the trailer is anything to go by. As the films have progressed, the five have slowly just become background characters of very little importance, with the exception of Tigress, and, and here they look to be completely irrelevant. What role do they play in this film exactly? This one its own isn't too bad, but it adds up to a lot of issues I have of what we've been shown so far, like what this film means for Poe's character. While we obviously have to wait and see what this film is actually going to do, I'm not very confident in what they're trying to do with Poe here. The whole inner peace gag is unfunny on its own and clearly put in the trailer to convince parents this is a funny movie to take your kids to watch, but it 100% feels very wrong if you remember Kung Fu Panda 2 in any capacity. Poe's whole arc in that film is about overcoming his childhood trauma, the loss of his parents, and the attempted genocide of his people by Lord Shen, finding his own inner peace. The finale of Kung Fu Panda 2 is incredibly well done and emotionally powerful. Poe's arc is what made the finale so satisfying, apart from just generally being cool as hell. Again, the movie isn't out yet, but this feels like an incredibly weird thing to make a joke about considering the weight behind Poe actually finding his inner peace. There's also the question of just how much character development is left for Poe to experience without it feeling like the film is undoing any of what he's previously learned and how much he's matured. From what we can gather from the trailer, it looks like Poe is having some sort of identity crisis and isn't taking the idea of retiring from being the dragon warrior very well. So much so that he's struggling to find peace with himself. And I'm sorry, but what did Poe say at the end of the last movie? Am I the son of a panda? The son of a goose? A student? A teacher? Turns out, I'm all of them. Why has Poe's character progression from free been completely thrown away? Poe trying to find a new successor is a good idea for a story, and there are plenty of places you can take this character to show how far he's come, even though I would have preferred if they just left the series at free. But this completely undermines Free's entire ending, what the f***? Mike Mitchell has said the film is supposed to be a love letter to the first, and that Poe's bond with Zen, this new character, is supposed to draw parallels to how he is with Shifu, which is an interesting angle to take, but we've been shown very little about Poe's inner conflict so far that actually has me fully invested in 
in this idea. I just don't feel this movie is going to push the series or Poe forward in any meaningful way. The plot is incredibly simple so far and very derivative of the third movie, especially when it comes to the villain just doing the same thing the previous villain did, but instead taking the power from previous villains this time instead of the heroes. They're clearly recycling ideas and struggling to come up with anything original, and this is on top of them resurrecting this franchise in the first place after it already had a perfectly sound conclusion. Again, the movie isn't out yet and it can absolutely prove me wrong, but given what I've seen in the finished and unfinished trailers, I don't get the sense that this movie needed to exist and it feels a lot more uninspired than the previous three. Which brings me to the animation and art direction. The animation, as expected, looks great. The lighting especially is fantastic, but this is expected of DreamWorks. I saw a lot of people get upset that this movie isn't going in a more stylized direction like Puss in Boots The Last Wish did, but I really don't see this as a problem for Kung Fu Panda as these movies always have their own unique art direction and atmosphere that they established using this style of animation, whereas Puss in Boots 1 didn't really have a visual identity at all and greatly benefited from going in a new direction. However, something does feel slightly off of Kung Fu Panda 4's visuals. Obviously, to say this is bad animation is just crazy talk, but despite keeping aspects of the franchise's visual identity, it also has some aspects that don't really fit. Like, call these nitpicks if you want, but visually this film doesn't seem to be as consistent as the previous three, specifically when it comes to the character designs. If you've been browsing Twitter lately, please just don't do that. You may have seen a lot of people complaining about the character design of this wolf character named Zen. They are a new addition to the cast and represent a massive shift in the art direction and character designs. The character designs for the previous films were downright immaculate. It embraced these blocky and sharper designs, making good use of distinct shapes in the characters' faces to create visually expressive designs that have an edge and a recognizable look and feel to them. Look at every member of the Furious Five, Tai Lung, Lord Shen, heck, just about every character in the previous films followed this design principle to a T, and it it helps give Kung Fu Panda its visual identity. Jumping forward to Kung Fu Panda 4, it's not just Zen, but none of the new characters seem to follow this design philosophy. Zen is probably the most egregious because they play such a huge role and look like they were ripped straight out of Zootopia, especially when her wanted posters have a much better design with more pronounced features and sharper shapes. And this is only with the character designs. While I do think the movie looks great, the colors and shades are much brighter than the first three films, and lack a lot of the ambience and atmosphere that they had in spades. This in conjunction with the character designs has be pretty confident in saying I am not a fan of this movie's art direction so far. It just feels incredibly safe and softer and lacks the impact of the original three films, which to me is not a good sign when you consider how the narrative itself feels off too. There's a pretty big shift in direction with this film. It feels a lot safer, far more tame and uninspired both visually and with its story. As I've said in this video, the movie isn't out yet, but this trailer is just not selling me on it. You can say I'm being nitpicky with a few of these points and you're probably right, but even in the old and awful trailers the previous films had, they at least still Still looked visually consistent. If there are six Kung Fu Panda movies planned out, then I like to look at that plan because from what I see and from what a lot of others are seeing, Kung Fu Panda 4 doesn't feel like a necessary installment or a long way to return. It feels like a surprise tacked onto a franchise that ended seven years ago. I have no doubt this will probably be an enjoyable and solid film, but it doesn't feel like Kung Fu Panda, at least not how I remember it. And honestly, even if it did tick all of my boxes for an ideal Kung Fu Panda movie, I'd probably still be somewhat against it because I'm just not a fan of bringing back franchises years after they have ended. I'm waiting on this this movie to prove me wrong, but as of now, I'm not terribly excited for Kung Fu Panda 4. Is it necessary? Probably, maybe, no. I'm leaning more towards no. But if it does turn out to be a good follow-up, I will be very happy. That's the end of the video. Play Yakuza, I don't care. No!